Welcome to the Marvel Cinematic University Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Canton III, and we are concluding our coverage of the Disney Plus series Loki, Episode 6, Season 2, probably the series finale, Glorious Purpose. Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing when you think about it, going back to the series premiere in Season 1, Glorious Purpose, OB, the whole snake eating itself thing. We are enclosing this series with a crew that we had last week. We'll introduce them in a second. But first, the super producer, Jake Christie's here. Jake, how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, very excited to have this crew back. Very excited about this episode and, uh, yeah, everything. Yes, yes. And the guests first, our buddy, our pal, friend of the show, Dalbin Osorio. Dalbin, how you doing, bro? AC, I'm going to tell you, man. So. I'm going to invite you down to Maryland just so you can introduce me like that. It was very suave, very relaxed. I need that in my life. I need to be introduced like that. Happy to be back with you guys. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And, of course, our pal, the black guy who tips amongst many other things, our guy Rod. Hey. Rod, how you doing, bro? What's going on, man? Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course, as always. And the producer who produces, Cinephobe. Anthony Mays, a.k.a. Corn Puzzle. Mays, welcome back, sir. What's up? We're back for the end of Loki, which means you guys are going to put me back on the shelf. <laughs> my, my reign of terror is coming to a close. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. There, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of bittersweet parts about that. Mays, that's one of them. And, and when I think about this episode overall, I mean the the one word that comes to mind is satisfying. I, I felt very satisfied seeing this episode and watching everything that happened. And there's so many ways that I can go about it, but I do think we need to a accurately give a hat tip and a salute to Tom Hiddleston for his performance in this episode. Incredible shit by him. Just like yeah. the encapsulation of the amount of time that he has put into this character. I was reading an article earlier today on Marvel.com about how they shot this episode um, and used, obviously, a lot of what episode four was and re in re repeat. And Hiddleston, all the, the whole cast would go to lunch and he would stay and just be uh, perfecting and fine tuning everything that he was doing. and. It was just an incredible performance overall, but I want to get everybody's takes on it. Rod, I'll start with you before we get into the episode and all the funky stuff that happened. What did you think of what we saw from Loki in this this episode? Oh man, I mean, I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was a like a good definitive kind of uh, place to hop off. Um, I said last week I thought we wouldn't get a season three and this felt like we wouldn't get a season three, which is fine right. with me. I think, you know, the, if you look at, I don't, I want to rewatch the series, but if you look at it as just 12 episodes of a series, I feel like it feel it, it, it completed its narrative loop and the character ends up in a place that is just so amazing to me to take, you know, the, the God of mischief and just in him as like a, a, basically a hero at this point, you know, and, and to see him kind of go through his penance, go through his redemption, his learning arc. Like it, I don't know, man, it all worked on me. And, 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 uh, I had fun along the way, uh, being introduced to like all these wacky characters and the TVA and everything. Absolutely. And and Mace, well, what do you think of Hiddleston in this this uh, overall episode? I mean, he's the title character and this episode and this series really put a nice flourish and bow on what he's done. I really enjoyed seeing the classic, you know, previously on Loki for this episode because they went all the way back to beginning of episode one i think which like rod was saying he'd like to go back and watch it in the beginning i'd like to do that too it feels like a really long time ago obviously and yeah i mean he did the thing man i, I can't speak so highly of every other character necessarily but in terms of loki and tom hiddleston he was phenomenal yes yes and and dalbin how about you yeah i i, I agree with that i think hiddleston what a what a good day for him and his lady, right? 
right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a good nerd day for him and his lady. I, I yeah. you know, but I thought Hiddleston crushed it. I thought that, um, you know, I had said this last when we when we all connected last week. If you had just watched twelve episodes of this, like just straight through one through twelve, the the you'd be able to kind of chart the growth in in a really exciting way, which is why I'm excited to rewatch it because we did have the gap after after episode six. Um, but Hiddleston carried this thing. If you had, if it wasn't him, that I I'm amazed. I think you're spot on, and we'll get into this more. Some folks did feel shortchanged, but this was definitely the Hiddleston show, and he drove it. And his where he ends up at the end is really exciting, both for the larger Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Marvel Multiverse, but also just for him as a character to see where where they can now go with him. So I thought it was dope. I thought they landed the plane, so to speak. Talk to me, Jake. What you got? I was just thinking about it. I have a cousin who is in middle school, and she has never been alive for a moment that Tom Hiddleston wasn't playing Loki. Like, that's how long he's been doing this. And I think the thing that what makes the show work and what makes his performance work is that, and I've said this before, but like, there are a lot of great performances done in the MCU by people who like, don't actually give that much of a shit about everything. Like Robert Downey Jr. doesn't actually care that much about the MCU lore, but he's capable. He's such a good actor. He's capable of doing it. Like Tom Hiddleston really cares deeply about all this. And I think that that's what allowed this emotional journey to work because it, it doesn't feel like he's half-assing it. It feels like he is taking this as seriously as any redemption story in any work of fiction. And I think that, um, yeah, it just, I, I love the symmetry of it being the name of the same, the same name as the first episode because it, we come in with him talking about how he wants a glorious purpose and he's, you know, messing around for 12 episodes trying to figure out what that is. And it's kind of staring him in the face the whole time. And I think that, um, it's a really nice redemption story, and I really the thing I appreciated about it in hindsight is that there was there really after the first episode there was no bullshit about like is he going to be bad again? It's like no, like he's it's a it's a growth story. It's a story about a man a man who went to evil depths to try to find purpose in his life, realizing that that is not the way to find purpose in, in service. Being in service of others is how you find purpose, and the fact that we were able to get a satisfying conclusion for his character is what. That's what's on the packaging. That's what we needed from the show. And as someone who is skeptical, when they announce a Loki show, I'm like, I don't need more Loki. Give me the biggest plate of crow in the world. I will devour it. I I was wrong. Hope is hard. Hope is hard. And I think our hopes, I think generally, I mean, to Jake's point, we were on this show, me, Jake, and Jerome at the time talking about Loki. And he's just like, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to go. You know, we kind of seen the character had a perfect, honestly, the redemption story had occurred and he dies in infinity war. And that was like kind of poetic and tragic in its own way. The fact that we were able to bring this character back and he's able to go through those beats and go back and realize that, Oh shit, I could be something more. You don't see that, you don't, and you don't see to Jake's point, him selling it the way that he has throughout. And the kind of going down memory lane of this final episode, viewing every single important moment of this series and of this season and getting back to that and really diving into that. I mean, I will say this just to jump into a scene real quick. And and I know he's a piece of shit, but that he who remains Loki back and forth was incredible. It really, it like, the echo of the season finale of season one, but take the Sylvie portion out of it, and it's just the two of them, one on one. And Majors is just like he is so locked in on this character; it's kind of like stunning to watch happen. So, I mean, I I want to go like and get everybody's take on it because I thought this scene just like stood out to me more so than anything else in the way that he who remains is just like. Yo, know, you don't have a chance here. And it's very casual. It's very like, you know, it's a good try. Take it, take a beat. Take a few seconds. The way that he's talking to him, it's just incredible stuff. Maze, I'll start with you. What did you think of that scene? When he mocked the stutter. <laughs> yes! That was the yes! that was the funniest part of the episode to me. Cause that's Jonathan that's Jonathan Majors doing three levels of acting right there. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna make fun of the own my own character that I created mm-hmm. with the stutter, but yeah, that was great. I, you know, the the reveal when he it's like, how many times do you think we've had this conversation? And he pauses time, and I really enjoyed that. And I, this this episode, 
I, I want to get into the time travel stuff a little bit later because yes. I thought this really brought the the time level, the time travel stuff, and in works of fiction to another level. But there was a lot of Greek myths happening in this episode. Obviously, with Loki being a god, you could say it's Norse mythology, but I'm picking up on the Greek stuff. And while the beginning was very Sisyphean, right? Just keep rolling that ball up the hill. The whole thing with He Who Remains kept reminding me of Atlas and Hercules, where He Who Remains is Atlas keeping the timeline together, holding it up, and then he tricks Loki, a.k.a. Hercules, into shouldering the burden a little bit. And that I forget what Atlas does in the Greek myth. I'm assuming he just went out and probably got wasted and had sex because he's yep. been a little tied up the whole time. Yeah. And it's Greek Greeks myth. be fucking, as we know. <laughs> so he went and hung out with Bacchus. But yes, now now is like the whole thing is still like, are we still on he who remains his path? Is this question. still what he wants he has that line to loki i like you you know he he's he's admiring of him or whatever and i think probably i think probably what we're supposed to think is that loki found a loophole here because what he who remains really wanted him to do was kill sylvie which is where i honestly thought the episode was pointing us the whole time but he found a way around that so I wonder, I wonder, is this, was this the plan or not? Ah, Dalbin, what do you think about that? Who? So I'm a big uh, Greek mythology fan, right? Like, just, so as Maze was talking, I was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, I could see that. Um, I, I love moments in shows and movies where folks just get to act. And that's what Majors and, and Hiddleston were doing. They were just acting, man. Like, it was just... Like, listen, man, like, like, even when he goes to him, he's like, yeah, no champ. Like, it's very Ali like, very The Rock like, like, it's just, it's just shit talking. He is shit talking that man, you know? And I think what's fascinating about it is that we've been led to believe now, and we talked about this in episode one, um, that all the versions of Kang are bad and they're going to fuck this shit up and they're going to fuck up the Avengers and all that stuff. But the real menacing one has been this motherfucker at the end of time. He's the menacing one. He's the one that you got to worry about. And so his goal was that Sylvie kills him so he can be reincarnated and win the multiversal war, right? Like that's that's got to be his end game. And now you may not get that, right? Because Loki, to Maze's point, may have found a, a loophole on it. But well, I think, quick time out right there. Quick yeah. time out. I don't think he wanted sylvie to kill him i agree because okay. that's kind of what he explained yeah well like when he he kind of makes fun of his own reincarnation line mm-hmm. when he's mm-hmm. like it's he got there a different way right because mm-hmm. he's getting mm-hmm. loki to replay it and redo right. it and possibly undo it right but remember loki wasn't going loki if you remember if you go back to episode six of season one he he's he wants both of them at least what he's telling them is he wants both of them to take his place not just one of them now in this episode he kind of plays against that he's like i didn't really like her i really want you right <laughs> like you're the one that, that that i want i i think that all of i think that all of this has been part of his game like him setting it up so the loom like very clearly he knew right that remember his plan was the book gets to victor timely so Victor Timely comes and tries to fix the loom. The loom ends up blowing up anyway, right? And so now that doesn't happen either. He's just Victor Timely, right, in in, in his timeline. Uh, honestly, like, I, I think Loki did find a way around it, but I think it's all part of a larger Kang plan. I think it's... it's, See, it's I, I, I think, disagree. Go ahead, yeah. Jake. I, I think the reason is because the thing about the loom being a failsafe, I mm-hmm. think is something that, like, the reason I disagree is not because I don't think it would be possible, but because just for the this being such broad storytelling like for such a mass audience he remains would have to be lying with basically every single thing he said and yeah. i just don't know if they would no like because he expresses that he created the tva to prevent the other kangs mm-hmm. and there is 
other than the fact that you know that Kang is a bad guy from the comics, there is actually nothing that He Who Remains does to suggest that he is being disingenuous about not wanting other Kangs. Like I, you're, just the thing no... with Ravana, Ravana. The thing with the yes. thing with Renslayer, and and that now suddenly he doesn't want anything to do with Sylvie. But in season in episode six, he's like, oh, I want both of you to take over, and now it's like, yeah, I don't, I really only wanted you. But can I ask a question? If this was all part of his plan, then why make the TVA at all? Why not just let? Like that's actually that's the thing. Because the TVA is the only thing that could prevent the other versions of him from coming. I think the okay. TVA is a necessary vehicle for him to stay where he is. I, now, oh, okay. The- I, was, I was misconstruing what you said his plan was. I thought yeah. you were saying his plan was to get Loki. Because I think what's going to happen now with Loki is mm-hmm. that now that he's now that all the branches are blooming, I think that there is going to be a war with Kangs. Oh, so yes. I, think he, I don't think Kang wanted him to do that. But, no, no, um, no. Right, yeah. right, right. Okay. okay. No, I... I, I, love I, it. I yeah. Actually, you know what, Rod? You've been sitting back, kind of like a mob boss. I want to hear what your, your, your thoughts are. <laughs> I was just, I was just listening, man. Um, the, I mean, for me, when I, I mean, obviously Jonathan Majors and <clears throat> Tom Hiddleston's scenes together were phenomenal. I mean, kinetic. It's really, you know, it, it's a shame, but it, it really felt like, oh, this is the crux of like, you got a series here. You know what I mean? Like you, you stretch out those like, you know, few minutes f- from season one, episode six to this one. And you're just like, oh, I see why y'all really were like, this dude's the future. And when you look at like the iterations of Kang he's played, uh, I, I think the most menacing Kang is the one in Ant-Man, even though he takes that L, but like, that's a, completely different character to me you know like or i'll say uh, did he take the l i don't know if he did right right you i know don't know if he like, necessarily did yeah the, the way he was talking that trash and the way yeah. like he physically was like whooping up it like it was a different take yeah, and, a different I mean, it's, tone it's yeah. amazing to watch a guy be able to do that to you know the like 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 may said man the the, the the levels of like picking on your own stutter that you created for your own version of this character like that's Stuff like that was amazing. Um, and then as far as like uh the the future or whatever, I'm I'm not I mean, because of meta shit in the real world, I'm not sure they even continue with the Kane stuff the way they were planning to do. Like they kind of left themselves a bit of an off ramp if they decide to take it. We'll see if they, they you know, how bold that is or whatever, but they kind of did some like mm, these Kings don't know about the TVA no more, so if they want to do something like that, I feel like people at the, as fans would kind of allow it because we do understand the bigger picture. Um, and I think that's really important. And then the last thing I thought was, how did someone come away from this and go Marvel is fucked? Like, I didn't yeah, feel yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, like, I don't know what yeah, they saw in that know. finale that made them feel like, oh my God, it's over. I, I was like, there's yeah. ways they could go with this that clearly they can continue this. Jake's about to hit us with something right right fast. I have a theory of what it was. Because I think the only way you could think that is if somehow you didn't realize what the Kang story was. Because there's clearly, obviously they have an off-ramp, but clearly what they're setting up is that they're going to be Kangs in all these different timelines, right? And so whoever said that, whatever that idiot who said they were fucked, I think just did not know the basics of the Kang storyline and thought that this was the first time they're introducing the idea of Kangs being in different universes. Mm -hmm. And like, if you're that dumb and don't know anything, then that, you would think that. But like, nothing changed now and so yeah i that's what that, i was really thinking about because like why would you say that it's like oh i guess if i was completely unfamiliar with the character and what his deal was and what the kang dynasty secret wars was i suppose you could think that that was a new idea but in that case why are you being quoted in an article about vari- uh, about marvel for variety exactly well yeah and well, yeah, i was i was saying well if i it's so and i guess i'll pose this question to the to the larger group at hand but like if say, okay, say this wasn't us five, right? It was just five regular dudes who watched that episode. I I, I don't I don't know about y'all, but like I, I I know I was watching and I had to sit with it for for a little bit. And this is again with comic knowledge. But if I had been a new person, I would have watched that and thought, okay, Loki's at the center of the, the tree that they showed in Thor. They're downplaying the Kang threat. Cause even like when they bring the folder to Mobius, he's like, Oh, but the, the Earth 616 took care of it, so we don't got to worry about it. So I'm thinking, I'm like, there's a bigger bad out there. Like, <laughs> like I, I, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I, I definitely, like, I, the quote made no sense to me because of because if I was just a regular layman's person who didn't have any knowledge, mm-hmm. I would have just thought, oh, the big bad is coming. That would have felt real Age of Ultron like. Like, all right, there's a, there's a bigger yeah. bad, there's a bigger bad guy coming. I mean, if anything, 
the ending is as open ended as it yeah. could possibly be. Like you can yeah. go yeah. any way with it. Now, granted, I would say just as somebody who happens to know that in Deadpool three, the TVA is in it. If the TVA is in it, then there's still going to be a multiversal slash probable mm-hmm. Kang connection. Yeah. Now, not Kang appearing in that movie, but like the connection is still there. And as long as you're doing multiverse and you're plucking Deadpool from Fox and Wolverine from Fox, there's still this the Secret Wars kind of like tissue is still growing and still building. So I still feel like the Kang character will play a role in how they decide to do that is anybody's yeah. guess. But I do appreciate the fact that they gave everybody kind of like a pause and a little bit of a break. So you don't really have to think about it to the to that degree. Obviously, nuts yeah. like you and me, Dalbean, will obsess over it. Mm-hmm. But um, that's where kind of like well, that's kind of where I am left off on it. And yeah, the majors, um, the majors Hiddleston scene is just like it's like you think about what majors did at the end of at the end of season one, and I and I and I always say to myself, I'll never forget that performance. It's just like mm-hmm. no matter you know, no matter what happens, it's just an insane performance to think about and to kind of like duplicate it and then give Hiddleston the chance to really play back with yeah. him. That was even the better part. And, and like so, he embodied mm-hmm. that character again after us seeing him do Timely and us seeing him do yeah. Conqueror. That yeah. was the thing to me that was just like, you know, it's almost like kind of a sad, <laughs> like like I was yeah. having a sad. It, 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 honestly, time, it, 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 like, yes, fuck, yes, man, you really yes. threw away a lot of greatness. Yes, because you can't control yourself. Don't worry, Rod. Don't worry. Oh God. Damn it, you sticky slow button. It's going to play eventually, and it's going to be great, but it's not going to happen when I want it to, so I'm just going to keep talking until... There you go. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my goodness gracious. So, uh, Maze, uh, you had mentioned earlier uh, when you were talking about, like, they did Loki a a service. They did did him very well, and... Obviously, now he is technically the he who remains holding all the timelines together. But you felt like some other characters were were underserved here. Let's talk about them. Wait, what you got? I mean, like, Sylvie, I guess, is going back to timeline jumping and shit. Yeah. Or maybe she'll just go back to that freaking <laughs> McDonald's again. But she was underserved, I would say. I mean, that like, there's a good conversation with her essentially at the same time spot where they were at at the end of last episode. And it seemed like he was asking her for permission to kill her. And she's like, I'm not going to give was, you permission yeah. to kill me. Hold dog. on. Before you continue, it was kind of funny because I started kind of laughing because it felt like Loki was on his DJ MV, like, yo, this is generational wealth, baby. You could do this. All I gotta do is kill you, and we gonna be all right. And Sylvie was not. That happy. that was that does explain why he was wearing a shiesty in the scene. I was really confused. <laughs> <laughs> Continue, baby. And then <laughs> Owen, I mean, he's gonna watch himself. I guess. He walked away from the TVA, I guess. I didn't really get that. I thought the thing with brad for example with Raphael, when he went and took over brad is that he was brad yes that was because it was on the sacred timeline because this is when if there's all the different timelines there's not going to be a version of, there's no timeline where he doesn't exist anymore actually i guess there's one but because the thing about brad the reason why brad could replace himself is because if there's only one timeline when he was pruned then he's not on that timeline anymore whereas the timeline that uh so Frank. so Owen wasn't pruned from jet ski salesman timeline. Is what he was, was, but I but there's so there's an infinite amount of timeline. So presumably the timeline he's on is one. Because I don't think he ever had any intention of taking over the life. I think he just wanted to see what it was. I didn't get okay. that impression. Well, I don't. I'm not sure what he's doing then. Because if he, he quit his job and now he's he's like checking out jet ski salesman single dad, and maybe he's gonna go check out the other ones that we didn't get to see. All right, fine. Ob. You know, wrote his new book. Good for him. Yellow cover this time. Instead of orange, we're making progress. I don't know. But he's, you know, he's going back to doing his shit, I guess. What's Is he going to build something new? Who knows? 
like that type of stuff. And especially with Renslayer waking up in the void, that's the one where I'm like, is there going to be a season three? And then you just wonder like, how do you have a season three of Loki with Loki holding the universe, the multiverse together? Obviously, if they do have a season three, he's not going to be there. So it's not really that conclusive. I don't know. I I get it. And, you know, we've talked. We talked a lot last week about how there's really just not a whole lot of time or room for these other characters. No. Our poor Hunter B-15. Yeah. Wumi Mosaku. Like, God bless. I guess they're like, oh, good for you. You're, you you should be on the council. What? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah. And, then, and then the council's full? Like, the meeting room is packed with people. Yeah. And, like, I recognized the woman from devs that we haven't, I don't think we've seen, we saw her maybe once yeah. this season, other than episode one. And I just, and I just kind of wonder what the hell, I wonder what the hell the TVA is going to do. Yeah. Like they still, they're still operating, but they're not pruning timelines. So what are they doing? Okay. Just keeping tabs on shit. I mean, I'm going to guess they're going to come across a particular threat that's unknown to them at this time, because there is still, there's still a, there's still a damn council of Kangs out there. Yeah. Like they're going to show, yeah. they're going to, like, it's going to, like, they, I don't think Marvel does that particular scene, goes, rips it straight from the books and puts it out there for everybody to see if they're not going to expound upon that. Yeah. Yeah. My take, because we were mm-hmm. talking, you know, uh, Dublin was talking about, you know, maybe there's going to be another villain. I, unless there's like a huge, like unless I, I think unless like Kevin Feige gets like threatened with being fired or something, I think they're going to keep the Kang multiverse storyline going just because they put so much effort into it, and because I think that the the appeal the the appeal of being able to get different people from different universes I think is so appealing from a financial standpoint that like I I can't imagine them abandoning it, and so I think I took the scene about them saying that the one on Earth six one six was taken care of and they don't know about each other, that to me is a very dramatic irony scene. Like that scene exists. So five years from now, we can be like how dumb they were for not seeing it coming. And so I think, I think that there's a lot, I think because of the actor strike and because they haven't been able to do anything on it, there's been a lot of talk about like drastic things they can do. But like, to me, it just makes no, I can't see the logic of turning a steering ship towards another enemy, even though we've been setting up another one for like three years. When you literally can just recast the guy. Like, if they're gonna, if if they're I'm going to, me. yes, if they're going to move away from the Kang storyline, the reason will be because the powers that be at Disney don't think it's financially successful. Yes. They won't do that just because of Jonathan Majors. They've recast him before then. Yes, the sell job has to be when Feige's in there with Iger and whoever the shareholders are. It's like, hey, when we do Secret Wars, this ain't really just about Kang. This is about bringing toby and andrew and hugh jackman and any any single fox or sony folk that you could think of and throw them up in there and also bring rdj back and Wait. scarlet and chris that what will happen what happened? uh i have a question maze do you think they should bring back david hasselhoff as nick fury <laughs> man <laughs> the rumors that circulated i mean I would love to fucking see it. I, I would not. Love. Genuinely would not be I mean, he's actually already in the MCU tactically as himself, but um, I wouldn't be surprised. I like, I don't know. Rod Dalbine, have you guys seen Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., that massive of piece of shit? Of course. <laughs> when sure it have. As long as he comes somersaulting <laughs> through that door, Jake, and belly flopping onto the table. It would be yeah. real, real washed agenda. AC would be in heaven. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh my god, two really wash furies. Um, really bad knees, all bad across knees. The board. Oh, my back. I mean, yeah. To just yeah, to just put this in perspective, just to keep it a buck, they're bringing back Electra, they're bringing back Electra, fine ass Jennifer Garner. That's right, Fair, but still, they're bringing back Electra. So that goes to tell me that like they the the focus is still to what Jake said and yeah. really my yeah. larger point is that like as long as secret wars is kind of like the big money maker and the thing that will not only be your um tentpole 
big time movie, but also your resetter, then right. you're going to still go with that. You're still going to build that story, even though it may take longer than people will want. Well, let me that, get Lou yeah. Ferrigno also. Yeah. Give me big <laughs> Lou. You got to bring in genuinely, big Lou. Got to. Unless someone is dead, I genuinely don't think there's any that would surprise me. Like, there, let's there's bring not someone. Let's hope that death is the actual reason they don't do it. Looking at you, yes. The Flash. <laughs> exactly. you're, damn, you're damn right. Yeah, and and this is why things. this is why they striked. This is why they striked. Yes. yes. I think Lou Ferrigno yeah. is in it is in one of these MCU movies of the Hulk. Oh yeah, he What's plays he was a security in the, Hulk, in the right? Incredible Hulk. Yeah. 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 yeah, he plays a security. Um, and then he actually for the first for the original Incredible Hulk movie, he actually did the voice of Hulk Smash, yep. which is kind of unnecessary because that's one line, but well, yeah. and I and I was I'll say I'll just to clarify I don't mm. I don't think they're gonna go the uh, different big bad. I'm saying that if I had been a, just a casual observer, I could see how yeah. they could do that. At the no, end. they left I it in a way that you can do that. I totally yeah, you could do that, right? I'll, I I will also, also like, say too. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Rod. Go ahead. I, I just want to say I will be the person that says I do think they could go with a different big bad. Like I don't think it's that big a deal to switch over, um, especially if you go Doom. I think Doom is just That's as true. integral to That's Secret fair. Wars in the comics That's as true. anything. And so, I mean, I don't know. It's just it really just depends on especially their... this version that they're doing, the incursion. Right. Yeah. I, I will say what I meant. What I meant more is that yeah. they won't steer away from Secret Wars. I can imagine them yes. putting another yeah. villain in charge of it, but I think they're still right. going to go to Secret exactly. Wars. Yeah, well, and you I think can that's see how you the TVA yeah. like actors yep. and and the and the construct around the con mm -hmm. around the MCU without like throwing all this shit away because I, I would really hate to see mm -hmm. that because. Part of the reason Same. I would hate to see that is because I think those characters deserve to be developed more, and yeah. it clearly yeah. isn't going to happen in Loki. So I'd like to see these characters again um, somewhere. Um, and I was going to add really quick, and I'll throw it back to you. Yeah, sure. um, but the thing it made me realize when I was preparing to do the show with y'all, this is the first MCU uh, Disney Plus series that isn't trying to spin off anyone into a a, like a star or another character featuring somewhere else. Like if you look at <laughs> the Agatha... Jet Ski Chronicles coming next fall. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> like, the thing is, like, it feels on, like man. two years two years ago you could have pitched that because two years ago they were doing everything on Disney Plus. <laughs> right. they really were. But as huge as like this series implications mm -hmm. were, it's a very yeah. insular story. Like it's a very like, intricate. Yeah. Yeah, it may, and it makes sense that it's not crossing over with like, oh, we expect to see Thor this week, or even though as huge as this fucking multiversal thing is, it's all like kind of like, and no one really knew this was going on. The Avengers don't even fucking know this is going on. Doctor Strange doesn't know this is going on. Right. So like, in a weird way, as big as the story was, it was strictly a Loki story. And maybe that's why it feels that way. There's no like... uh you know, secondary character where you're like, oh yeah, this will the Agatha series after this, or oh man, you know it'll be cool when we see Miss Marvel show up on a movie screen. Like that's not gonna happen with any of these characters. Yes, and Jake, uh, Jake, when we did Werewolf by Night, that was one of the chief things that we mm -hmm. loved about it more so than anything else. Yeah, like we kind of knew that. Hey, this is a standalone thing. This is kind of its yeah. own thing in its own universe. Just some offshoot random weird ass um mm -hmm. very black and white uh totally different off the page horror story and mm -hmm. it worked not only obviously because yeah. the performances and stuff like that but because but of i that still thing, do need to know i do need to know that man thing is good and he's my friend and i'd like to see him again. yes 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 <laughs> salute to man thing legend legend in the uh, legend in the game um, well and i well, I was because Rod Rod made a really good point that like, I, and I, I wrote it down. Like, think about the the Disney Plus shows that work, right? Mm -hmm. So, WandaVision in Jersey, nobody even only Doctor Strange knows that that's happened. Nobody else, right? And he finds out after the fact, right? Uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, not so much because it's dealing with a lot of the bigger folks coming back from the blip issues, right? Doesn't really yeah. work that well. Uh, uh, Shang Chi worked really well as a movie, kind of, kind of an insulated story. It was a family story, family dynamic. The tag at the end made it connect to the bigger stories, but really, it's a very family oriented, big, you know, kind of insulated story. I think, I think that's a big reason why, to your point, AC, why Werewolf, Werewolf by Night, and why this works because it's you need to flesh out, the, you need to make people care about these the, these characters, right? Like one of the things that I say whenever I'm watching TV and like a really kick ass moment happens. 
moment earned. Like when Jey Uso super kicked Roman Reigns, we were like, wow, that moment was earned. Yes. You got to earn these moments. You that moment with Loki at the end, you have to earn that. Otherwise, it's just not gonna work. It's just not gonna. It's not gonna the work. The hilarious part it's about this now is it's a it's non. I was, I was gonna say, I wonder if it's the casting yeah. department's fault, you know, because like <laughs> yeah. these actors are so good in these parts and so interesting. It made to me, it made me want like, well, what is yeah. their background? What else do they do? Mm-hmm. And then like, yeah. but clearly at the end of this season, watching what I just watched, that wasn't something that they were in. Like as a as a show, they weren't like, no, we were bringing you into the TVA so you'll be interested in like a TVA show next year. It's just, yeah, it's like no, it was kind of just to get Loki his full arc, and then these people were cool and helped to develop his full arc, but they were not cool in a. Yeah. They are their own <laughs> characters that we should be interested in. Way, but I guess the thing is, the alternative is to have very flat characters that you don't want. Like, I would right. rather have a show that has a lot of characters I'm a little bit disappointed I didn't see more from than have a show where everyone except for the main character is yeah, boring. You, you I, 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 obviously, I prefer... I would prefer a show where everyone's fleshed out. But, of like, course. I also think that this is a part of... When you're writing TV that is only six episodes, beyond the fact that you don't have a lot of time right. to develop these characters, when it's mm-hmm. a show like this, this show is still being... It's not, like, because this show is six episodes, it's being developed at a slower pace than a regular TV right. show. Like, these writers are still sitting with these characters for an incredibly long time. So, like, they, I guarantee you they've had conversations about 100B15 that they could never put into an episode. And that's why I... The thing I would wish is I wish... And I know I go back to this all the time. I hammer this and I'm a broken record. But, like, if these things were cheaper to make, it would not be so ridiculous to say, like, why don't we just have a TVA fun thing that they do? But, like, because all this stuff has to cost $150 million, they would never do that. I would love to just spend time with... Yeah. Casey, give me the Casey at show. The at the <laughs> Casey and OB just at the at the cubicle. I feel like ten years ago that would have been a web series. Right? Yeah. Or, 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 or a Marvel short, right? Like how they used to do in yeah. Phase One, right? And that's something mm-hmm. that I think is yeah. definitely something they should bring back because I think yes, I I would love to see Casey explaining like yeah, you know, I just I I, I have these dreams of being in Oakland and people shooting at me, right. you know, like I want to hear that story. Yeah, Tell like, me that. It story. could even be like a comic, you know, like, it, yeah. like there's a lot of yeah. ways to take something like this. Um, and uh, I, I also was like hella interested in the changes at the TVA at the end, like the, the way the desk were set up, the, the, all the people being in the rooms, the way it felt like democratized yeah. in a way, because before yeah. the reason that it got so fucked up is that it was like a tiny group, a cabal of people, hoarding power yeah. while also being fucking yeah. puppets and not really understanding they were puppets. <laughs> like it, yeah. like that stuff was interesting to me and, and not in a, like, I need six episodes to explain, but like a, like you said, if we had a short or like a web series or mm-hmm. something, just like a, what, well, and it could be funny as hell. Just like, what's it like working in the TVA? That's kind of like, like TV, the office, the office. like a mockumentary. Like, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Same page, bro. Yeah. Let's see all the snack machines. Let's, let's drink some hot yeah. cocoa. Let's see, and get see, some let's see, let's see Casey. Let's see Casey. started on yes. the cocoa. <laughs> Let's see Casey put Obi's book in Jello. Let's see that. I want to see. That. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Oh goodness gracious! But um, <laughs> I know there was. I know Maze wanted you wanted to talk about the time travel and how things have changed here. Um, you want to get into that into detail? Yeah, man. We can all just... Yeah, let's do that. Uh. I love time travel shit. It's Same. some of my favorite mm-hmm. subject matter in in media. And when this show started, it was a cool concept. And it's like, okay, so we've got time police, time cops. You know, they, they supervise the timelines and all that stuff. And then it's evolved quite a bit. And while I thought we were on like a closed loop, type of time travel now i'm really not so sure and it seems more like open concept or like butterfly effect like things might actually change but then that's also all just happening within the tva not in the timelines themselves so just you know it's it's complicated it's quite complicated and i thought what was so funny about it last week was when ob was basically like it's all bullshit like this is all crap we're making it up we're really leaning into the fiction part of the science fiction. But then in this episode, we get back to some core concepts with Loki himself. So the time slipping becomes a combination of Billy Pilgrim and Slaughterhouse five, the Kurt Vonnegut novel where he's unstuck in time and he jumps 
but he doesn't have control of it. So it's like he, he's just his consciousness just wakes up in different parts of his life. And then this Loki's controlling that. But then what Loki uses that power to do is to groundhog day the fuck out of the beginning of this episode. Yeah. Let's do it again. Let's go over. Let's do it again. How long is it going to take me to learn all of the science that I need how to learn this? I don't know. Centuries. Cut to centuries later, you know? And one of the things that I love about Groundhog Day so much is that it's an insanely high concept comedy that th- or comedy but premise that they do absolutely no exposition on. They yeah. don't explain it at all. They don't tell you why it happened. They don't tell you how it happened. It's just happening. So we don't we're not allowed to do that anymore. We have to explain the fuck out of everything that happens in movies, television, whatever. But I thought that this episode did such a good job of, like, kind of cheating it. You know, like, why is he time slipping? Uh, I I guess because he who remains made him time slip. But how did he learn to control it? Don't really know. How did he learn how to pause time? Don't really know. But he did. Like, he's just, he's leveling up. He's gaining powers. How long has it been? forever but like how long have they been in the tva forever it doesn't matter and so i just thought it was it was cool man they did a good job of of using some concepts that we've seen before but remixing them a little bit and you could really fucking feel the exhaustion Mm -hmm. on loki and the thing that's you know like we i guess this happens in a lot of shows but has the motherfucker slept or ate at well, all? He's, he's no, definitely not so. doing that anymore. Like he just time slips back to another point, starts over going a hundred miles an hour and then just keep like, I, I can't even imagine what that toll must have been like on his psyche, on his brain, on his. And then so imagine live. when it didn't work like that is really yeah. like. And, yeah, it, it reminded me of a couple of things. One, I'm because I'm not as well because uh, I'm not very well read with the classics. My first thought is, oh, this is Dom Gleason in About Time, which you know that I'm uncultured, but because mm-hmm. um, no, that's, that's a good time that's travel movie too. Yeah, time travel where you go back into your own consciousness as opposed to being a different consciousness. Well, you know what's funny mm-hmm. that you mentioned that uh, Days of Future Past did that too with the consciousness. Thing. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the thing too that. Um, it reminded, reminded me of a couple of things, but one reminded me of um, in Palm Springs, the bit where, because yeah. literally the thing about uh, Christian Milioti's character learns about uh, physics and stuff. And mm-hmm. then it, it reminded me a lot of, you mentioned Sisyphus, there's an episode of Doctor Who I really like called Heaven Sent, where it's about where basically the Doctor keeps, the difference about it is he doesn't know it because he keeps dying over and over again, but he ha- his his like punishment for something is he has to basically punch through a 20 foot wall of diamonds. And so he has to keep doing the same day over and over again and dying and doing it over and over again. And I just love that because there is such a, whenever you have a character that's like doing something over and over again for a span beyond our own comprehension, there's just a deep pit of like despair. You almost feel thinking about it. Like I can't comprehend what it is like for him to do this. And so I felt that like, you're absolutely right. The Hiddleston was able to play that and like, they're just like the way that he kind of, I don't know, I, the scene where he's explaining everything after centuries is some of the best acting I've seen him do. I mean, actually, yeah. no, it just is the best acting I've seen him do in the MCU. And it like really, you felt it. It did not feel like the centuries later thing felt like a gag when you first saw it. And then the moment you saw the next scene is like, no, this dude has been doing this for centuries. He can't, he has no patience for any of this. No, the look on his like, face when Obi like tells him that he has to go back. I was just like, wow. I like the way just, they wrote it too, because like he's, Kurt and at the same time a baseline level of polite enough that they won't Mm -hmm. like it won't stop things like he's just he's Mm -hmm. like this is just enough to make you do what the fuck I want you to do without asking a bunch of fucking questions I don't want to explain because I know at this point I know what's extemporaneous I know what's exactly what's needed I fail because you asked about the fucking tape. I've, you know, like when he says, like, make sure you take here, here, and here and latch the back of the helmet. And you're mm-hmm. like, fuck, he yep. got this far. And that fuck, that, that was such great yeah. writing and just efficient use of time. Don't leave the multiplier on the, on the, the ground. On the it'll roll off. Yeah, it'll yeah. roll off. Bruh, yeah. Cause could have used, used like, <laughs> yeah, I could have used like one or two 
scenes or times where he loses his shit. Just, yeah. but that's just for me. Like, like you said, Rod, it was implied that he had. It was so good because I've never. Where it didn't. I would have never thought to do that. I would have. I would have been like, no, this is our fun montage. So one of, some of the montages mm-hmm. just him eating key lime pies and being like, fuck it. And some of the yep. montages <laughs> are going to be, you know, the shit rolling off. And all the, and the way they did it was so good that when you see uh, Victor Timely make it all the way, you keep expecting something like fucked up to happen because you're like, well, th- wait, they're showing us the successful time because his acting is showing us the, the failures. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, that was great yeah. stuff, man. Oh my gosh, I love that. Yeah, yeah, well, you, you, what, was... what you want to say, Dalvin? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I was gonna. Say, so Looper is one of my favorite uh, time travel mm-hmm. movies. And at the beginning, right when like Bruce Willis is like, "We're not gonna do this. We're not gonna sit here and spend all day talking about this because it's stupid. Fuck this shit or whatever. We're gonna be doing our diagrams." Like at some point, I think I definitely um, stopped trying to figure out what was happening and kind of just let it. Like it was like, all right. Tell me the story, right? Like, let me, let me just, let me just enjoy the story because I'm, I'm with you, Maze. Like, I was like, man, like, he keeps failing. He's, t- he's coaching Victor through it. Like, all right, just one more step. Hey, don't forget about this. Don't, you know, all oh, the buttons are a little sticky, which means that there's been a couple times that Victor got to the end and couldn't, couldn't hit the button, right? Like, so even that, like, I'm like, shit. Like, how close did you get to winning? Um, and when they finally do it. I, I, for me, I kept waiting for the other shoe to drop, man, because I was like, shit, they're going to take this away from us. Like, I, because I wanted them to win. I did. I had bought in. I was like, man, I need yeah. you guys to win. He, 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 I think he hugs Victor uh, after the, after they finally do it. Like, and you Dude, feel I didn't this even relief. Think Victor was, there's a moment where I'm like, Victor's not even going to make, he's turning into spaghetti on the way back. He's just, he's turning <laughs> yeah. spaghetti on the way back. That, then we're going to have to start this never ending pasta. I was waiting for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, so good. And, um, oh, another good. thing I wanted to point out real quick too was um, yeah, sure. the last episode being science fiction and then turning the story on its head and being like, it's about the fiction, not the science. It's like, it's not whether we can explain this shit that you care about. Mm-hmm. It's the characters that you care about. It's the time, you know, it's, it's the arcs that you care about. And I just, and I know they didn't directly say this, but I can't think of a better like finish to this than, he becomes the god of stories. And what are timelines if not just stories? You know, this man mm-hmm. is holding the stories of the universe together with just his sheer will um, mm-hmm. so that people can continue to exist and have free will. Like, that is just such a, like, dope way to take the character and especially a character like Loki, which almost all of his trauma comes from the fact that he feels destined. Like, I don't have free will. Mm -hmm. I'm a loser. I'm going to be evil because that's my role to play. And here's this guy breaking the the cycle for everybody else with, by, because he just understands that cycles can be broken. Now it's just, ah, the the beautiful, uh, the, the beautiful irony of it is that in the Avengers, he is, trying to kill his brother being a genocidal maniac so he can rule one planet right yeah. and the thing is what ends up happening is when he becomes when he realizes that he needs to be good he ends up ruling over every universe everyone yeah, yeah. That, that is the thing that his that it, it that you, you you never can you can't grab power in that way like i mean you can't but you can't grab like purpose and meaningfulness in your rule but like the fact i think that the the trade-off is ultimately he wants people to bow to him on earth but now when he's controlling all the universes no one knows yes Mm -hmm. Uh, the the conversation is really great in this way because i mean it it brings me back to when loki and uh loki and sylvie are having the conversation at the end of the season one where he's like sylvie i don't want a throne i just want you to be okay and Somehow he gets the throne and she's okay, and so, which is like really well, cool. But go ahead, Dalvin. Well, and I was like, and to and to that right because like you're you're talking about a, a character like Jake said, who again like that when the Marvel Disney shows have worked well, like WandaVision was an exploration of grief, right? Like just like what it means, right? To like just not be over this huge loss. Like Loki, like he wanted Odin to love him, right? Like that's what he wanted, right? Like he it, and and remember, it's this Loki, right? The one who takes the Tesseract. Like so, this wow. Loki left Earth. <laughs> <laughs> this Loki left Earth, not Loki knowing, Loki. you know, not knowing if his brother was okay, not knowing if his dad loved him, right? Like feeling like he had been robbed of that throne, 
And to, to end this part of his arc with the same things he says to Odin, right? Like, oh, I, I, I'm doing this for, for all of us, right? And he's saying that to Sylvie and Mobius. Like, that's what, like, Rod keeps saying it, and it's true. That's some damn good fucking writing, right? And that's, yeah, again, man. a moment that's Yeah, earned. to take something it's, from all the way it, back in 2011? From, from 12 years ago? That is earned, man. That is earned, you know? So I, I was beautiful, beautifully done. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Can we talk about the scene with him and Mobius? That was probably the one that was most affecting to me. Of yes. in terms of like like obviously the scene with him remains was like probably the best scene in the episode, but the whole thing about like the moment that sticks out to me and it's so obvious, but just I, I mean I love the fact that like Mobius plays it in such a way that he knows that something is going. He's not like in a probe of why he knows all this stuff, but he's willing to go along with it. He's not like what's going on, what's going on, what's going on, you know? Yeah. But the thing I loved about that moment is when Loki asks. Who was your partner? Because he knows he's talking about him in that story. Like that's so it's an obvious thing, but I love yeah. the comfort and like I don't know. I I just thought that that was like the most sincere I've seen Mobius. And it, it it I think there's a lot of confusion about like why Mobius is at the TVA. What does he do? And I think that like I think you kind of get it. And he, he he explains to Loki like he tells Loki what Loki needs to hear, which is that you got to sacrifice something and that it's not comfortable. And I just love the way that uh, Owen Wilson played it because it it took a character that kind of is like, oh, this is just a functionary stand in for a regular office guy. But it's like, no, he has a lot going on. He's really thinking I'll, about this stuff. Also, um, it made me feel like if uh, Loki hadn't been so resistant and stubborn at the start. It, Mobius would have been open from the start. Like, like it didn't feel like the character yeah. changed at all. I'm like, yeah, Mo Loki changed because this didn't have to be this hard. He just made it so right. difficult. Yeah, I think <laughs> Mobius was willing to always give him a chance. This is a person who is more of a prober as far as the way that he conducts his conversations. And I mean, think of um, think of the story that he told about this being an eight year old person that they pruned, and he didn't want to do it even if people would die because of it and the idea of looking at the bigger picture and loki seeing that and there's a small little thing that happens when loki is talking to he who remains before like all these little things happen to loki throughout mm -hmm. this episode and it continues to build and build you know as he's having the conversation with he who remains there's this little note on the board you gotta uh, zoom in that loki looks at and it says you have to sacrifice something. Something must be given up. So that continues to kind of build. And then, you know, Mobius obviously talks about, hey, you got to look at the bigger picture. And Mobius is even, you know, is talking about himself in that moment. And as much empathy as he has for this person who gets pruned, you know, he looks at Renslayer with respect because she's somebody who's able to do that. And... Also, I do appreciate the fact that they pointed that out, that Renslayer wanted Loki there. So mm -hmm. all of that story continues. That's why, like, when Maze talks earlier about, like, is this still the plan? Is this potentially right. still the plan? I do love that it's open-ended. You're not 100% sure. Right. So, yeah. I mean, it's... It's a, it's a, this this episode leaves you with a lot is a, with a lot to think about. I know one oh, I know one, one more thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, sure. I also love that conversation with Loki and Morbius because I mean Mobius because up until Whoa, that the point, conversation with Mo Morbius. Woo. <laughs> my fault, Mobius. Red uh, pill blue pill baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, because you, no, I said that, he said Morbius, not Morpheus. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I'm taking it to be Morpheus. That's what I'm taking. It as. <laughs> A lot is happening from that one R. My bad, everybody. Um, <laughs> but right there, yeah, that's the hardest R. <laughs> it's fucking up time travel continuum. Um, the thing I was gonna say is uh, that I'm glad they had that conversation. Because up until that point, I was like uh, thinking he could just go to before they got Sylvie off of her timeline as a kid and just like, oh, that's how you stop Sylvie. She never has to become. And then when uh, Mobius is kind of like, yeah, I didn't want to prune a kid. And then shit got fucked and everyone was dying. I was like, oh, OK, yeah. So some shit got to have it. OK, I got it. All right. Good, good job, writers. Good job, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was I was racking my brain and I just did a quick search to see what he could have been talking about. If that was supposed to be a reference that we knew or whatever, I don't think there's anything out there on that. But I did yeah. think that was interesting. I oh, thought yeah. that it might be, but I'm like, you know what? I'm sure Disney didn't do that because they'd be like, the association of people who died in the mill fire in so and so Romania <laughs> are upset. Like, I understand they wouldn't want that. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> there's some people we could come up with, man. Like Franklin Richards would be a good one. Um, yeah. uh, Charles Xavier's son um, is a good one um, too. The uh, uh, that yes. had the FX series about Legion, you know, like there's Legion? some good like there's some good like well, I was saying like a real life natural disaster. I wasn't a superhero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm I'm going to the like you could put it in a that's if it's a Marvel character. It's yes. it's like okay, okay that's, better. But, that's better. Yeah, they went and found like some kid who killed a bunch of like it yeah, was the kind of like, like is this gonna my first thought, my first thought was like, is this going to be some like disaster that was accidentally caused by a kid? But I'm like, no, yeah. it wouldn't do that because the family would get mad. You, no, you, you, you have the answer for you, Jake. It's obviously that they crossed over into uh, Hogwarts and they pruned Voldemort. <laughs> mm. I was going to go Davidian. the video. Let's get real serious, but I like yours. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that that just uh, yeah that but that I I love that scene just of the like. Uh, you can't just not do the job because <laughs> I was like, yeah, just don't, don't get Sylvie. It's like, no, you can't just do that. Yes. Yes. And there's a, I was thinking about Loki overall, like what is, cause this, this series clearly doesn't definitively end the character for me, just this specific arc right now. I do think there are just two things left for Loki to do as a character in the MCU. Number one, make out with his variant. <laughs> and done that. What are you talking about? And die. <laughs> <laughs> when Kane calls him lover boy, that cracked me up. <laughs> I I think that the two things, there are two things, and I really do feel like these are two things that are going to happen. One is his his overall story playing into the Secret Wars theme, and then the other one, which is is gonna pop the crowd and get everybody all in their feels, is when ah. it's sec- <laughs> when it's secret- incredible. It's, it's just incredible timing, and when it's Secret Wars, he finally has a a reunion with his brother Thor because I feel oh, like they're man. gonna pop the crowd with that one more time. Yeah, mm-hmm. I saw someone in your mentions AC saying like it's sad that Thor's never gonna see him like this, and like I never want to be rude, but I'm like, you wouldn't make him do this if he's not gonna see Thor. Like this is storytelling yeah. one on one. Like why would you do this if he's not gonna have that moment? Exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, and I feel like personally, I feel like. When that happens, both characters can go off in the sunset and yeah. disappear. Like that that's mm-hmm. that's kind of the thing that I want to see um in the future is those two in the the actualization, the self-realization yeah. of who they are as people mm-hmm. and coming to this as brothers because I mean, you go back to Ragnarok and it is they just had such a such a wonderful bond at the end of that movie. So yeah. I'm, I'm and, and Chris Hemsworth can only take HGH for so many more years. So he really <laughs> needs that. <laughs> yeah. That's cold blooded right there, man. Yeah. That's cold. Yeah, his blood will be cold if he keeps injecting that shit. No, yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> Ta- to if Taika directs Alzheimer. that scene, if Taika directs that scene, I need Thor to tickle Loki while he's holding all <laughs> of the timelines. If Taika directs that scene, there are some big problems with Marvel Studios. <laughs> yeah. They just bring Tyke in for one scene. They're like, hey, man, we need you to, to get this brother. We need, we need a, con- we need what a consultant. Rock and roll song. What rock yeah. and roll song is he going to play in the background? Brothers in Arms. Come on, let's not be stupid. Let's not overthink this. <laughs> Dalbin, I wanted to ask you, because last week you were talking about like how Loki could be the Molecule Man role. How did this finale affect that? He's 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 now in a perfect place to be the MacGruffin of of of, of Kang Dynasty. The MacGruffin, you, right? The crime think, dog? What do you mean? Well, so no, so, so he's at the center of the world tree now, right? So he's at the center of the okay. world tree, and theoretically, right? Like if you believe that, the, like AC said this at the beginning, if you believe that the TVA is going to recruit multiversal heroes, right? They're gonna have to go to the man holding all the timelines to pick, you know, pick out 
uh, prime versions of those heroes from those timelines. And if you were a Kang and you wanted to stop that, what's the one way that you go to stop that? It's a race. It's a race to try to get to Loki to try to stop that from happening. Um, so I mean, I think he's. I think he's in position for a Kang to target him to take his powers, right? Um, I think he's. He's also in position for to be the key to defeating Kang because he's the one that can bring all the heroes into the main timeline to defeat to defeat Kang and the and the and the Council of Kangs if they go that route. Um, but I, I think. I mean, he's now he's set up as the key. He's the. He's the. Uh, yeah. He's the thing. He's the you omnipotent. Steal. He's the he's, omnipotent he's force the in the he's, MCU right now. Like, right. if I mean, from a from a hero standpoint, he's this Davy is Davy Jones' is hard in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'm I'm so mad at how happy that just made Michael Springfield. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> I, did it for him. I did that for him. <laughs> you don't understand how obsessed he is with Bill Nye as Davy Jones in Pirates of the Caribbean. I, it is actually I do because so I had pointed oh, out right. that Love Actually is one of my favorite movies, and he. Oh, right. A big kick out of that, and I was like, "Oh, right. good, another love actually." Or he's like, "Yeah, no, it's actually because I really like Davy Jones." Yeah, <laughs> I love how we got there. That's great yeah. stuff. That's great stuff. Um, all right. So I feel like the best way to kind of close this and wind this down is, you know, how do we evaluate Loki as? Is this the best Disney Plus series? period or by far or do we feel any different about it um anybody can go the answer is yes is it by far i'll have to sit on that that's my answer short and sweet yeah it, yeah it is by far what are we like what are we doing like we're, are we really throwing yeah, right. wandavision right. out the there show, it's like yeah. like wandavision i think had a lot of potential it had a but chance I, but i think it was like that is the most classic example of you know what joanna robinson has detailed in great like volume in her book is they made a show with a cool concept mm -hmm. and it was going great and then at the back half they're like well uh, we need to have a big fight that had no stakes and all the originality of the show was completely drained and then they essentially funneled her into Doctor Strange. So, like, if WandaVision had been allowed to be WandaVision for an entire series and all that, I think it could be in the conversation. I think everything else has been more or less mid. Like, there's like everything, like, there's been some moments in Hawkeye or whatever. But no, Loki, I think this finale was definitely the best episode of this season and didn't quite match season one, but it was still good. And it yeah. still has, you know, it has distinct characteristics that make it interesting to watch. Like the fact that we're all talking about, let's get the fucking Casey Webb series. That's true. Is, is, a, is a testament to what it actually mm. accomplished. Like no one wants to see the fucking bank manager from Falcon and the Winter Soldier in a web breakout. Okay. No. Like denying loans to more, no. more minority superheroes. Like, I'd I'd want to make that for my own reasons, <laughs> that be very funny. but nobody else wants to see that shit. Yeah, oh, well, I think uh, um, ahead, with Rob. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, there's like things I am interested in spinning out of that universe. Um, you know, there's stuff they're gonna do. You know, Armor Wars and all that stuff that I that I will be watching. Um, but yeah, I, as a person that generally likes the series that they do um, for MCU stuff. Um, I still feel like this is probably the best um, yeah. partially because it, it, it's it got two seasons, um, which mm. gives it a leg up on a lot of these things because most of these things got six to eight episodes. Um, but in the two seasons, like I feel like they had a complete narrative loop. They, they clearly started with a plan to get him here. Um, and my big thing is when it's planned out, I actually enjoy MCU stuff a lot. When it feels kind of slapdash, I like like Secret Invasion was just so like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, did y'all even think about this before you did it? Type of feel. It's for clear me. they did. They did. The reporting yeah. suggests they did. The reporting suggests <laughs> that they did not. Okay, and then um, the show you suggests know, they and, did not. That too. <laughs> yeah, and I I won't I can't retroactively take away my enjoyment of uh, WandaVision, and uh, I yeah. did love uh, the Doctor Strange tie in like Same. whether they lucked into that or not it worked out so well for them and that i was like 
I when one division ended, I went, I don't think she learned her lesson. And then when Doctor Strange started, I went, she didn't learn her lesson. All right, well y'all did that, you know, like so I so like st- there's things that worked for me in a lot of these series, um, but I just feel like this is the pinnacle, and partially because I think Tom Hiddleston is so committed to this character. Mm-hmm. He's played this character longer than any of the people that that had other spinoff shows. Like he's been in the shit from like Jump basically and uh it's so clear that that they cared so much that I don't know if you can duplicate that. And then the last thing is they, as much as we're talking about Kang, this show didn't feel to me responsible for integrating Kang into this universe. Yeah. In the way that so many of these other Disney shows that's where it kind of gets goes left with them is that there always mm-hmm. is this moment of like, and we need to let people know that this person's out there because they're going to be in something else later. And when you do that, you kind of lose something. I like, like I know we kind of talked on the fence about, you know, this idea of your secondary characters, but sometimes the secondary characters, the agenda to make sure they exist beyond this series can like, it lowers something in the stakes of the series that you need to make sure that Julia Louis Dreyfus is in three more movies and two more. It it just lowers yeah. something, and this yeah. didn't feel like that. Even if it made you feel like, damn, I wish we got more of this character. To me, that's better than you know. <laughs> this is so arbitrarily yeah. about this other character that now Sharon Carter has like weird plot armor around her that we don't even need for this series, you know. Yeah, the heel turn was a little weird there. I, I mean, the one thing I, I'll say to just give um, its proper due, I'll give She-Hulk like a lot of credit because I think that that show just as a sitcom and just the way that they had structured it, I think did a great job of getting over the character to the audience, even though the dude bros did, you know, did what the dude bros will do. Yeah. And um, I do I have to speak because, as everyone knows, I am the number one She-Hulk defender in the United States of America. Um, I didn't want to say that because I didn't. I, I know that it's not as good as Loki, but in terms of what how much I not, enjoy the show, but, uh, it is yeah. definitely the one I enjoyed the most. I will be. Yeah, that first, that first. Listen, when we got the Wong and uh and what's his Madison? face, yeah, and Wong and Madison. What? One oh my god, that was end. hilarious. <laughs> but isn't that a kind of the same problem of like they just didn't let it be She-Hulk? Yeah. I feel like they mostly did actually. Well, I think they, they made the, they made the joke at the end, the 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 big joke at the last the final episode with the whole uh, meta conversation with right. with uh, Kevin. Well, yeah, Kevin. Robot. Kevin. Yeah. yeah. But right. also, but I think that that even even that that felt like a late late stage rewrite of we need to fucking figure out because like the whole thing of they had to move Bruce up to the front because yeah. of whatever reason, and then it just like. I there guess were, they, yeah. If they let She Hulk be a show, and especially if they let She Hulk be a show with Matt Murdock, yeah, like that's dope. I'm in on that. But it felt like they didn't quite figure out if they could be that show, or if they had to do something else, or if they had to get Bruce Banner in there. And then the insanely me- meta ending, like the most meta the MCU's ever been, <laughs> it felt like ah, oh, we're we're trying to like dig ourselves out of this hole real quick. I guess the thing I would say I, is I agree with you generally about that, but I, I think that because of the type of show it is, whereas Loki, every episode affects how I feel about the other episodes, that, like, I, frankly, like, I have some issues with how the ending went about, but, like, that doesn't affect how funny I think the episode with Wong and Madison is. Like, because the show is, I, I didn't feel like the show, there's no, the larger plot is kind of, like, in the background, so I, I, I wish there was even less of a larger plot, but, frankly, we already discussed that in our <laughs> show. <laughs> also, yes, I um, think the uh, I think the finale for She Hulk also like I felt like it didn't it didn't to me didn't feel like a rush rewrite or whatever mostly because she had been breaking that fourth wall the whole time. So if there's a show where you're gonna do something fucking one. like breaking the twelfth wall or whatever, that was the <laughs> one. I just for me it was like oh they're not gonna do that. I, like I remember watching the second to last episode being like. All right, and then they'll fight, and then they'll fucking like. I never heard any prediction that people were like, "Oh yeah, they're breaking." This is gonna be crazy. Like that finale was enough for me to 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 give it a, a, a distinct feel from the other shows. And you know, to their credit, I feel like a lot of their series do have distinct feels um, compared to the other shows. Like I, I feel like, what if it feels like something different than? Uh, then, then, then Loki, then feels like WandaVision, then feels like She-Hulk, 
uh, than feels like Miss Marvel. And that's really just hard to do. And I, and especially when you want to have a through line and continuity, it seems like the only thing that truly hold these series back is that they have to have some type of commitment to a bigger plan or, and that's where things start falling a little short. But yeah, for me in general, I've, I've enjoyed this stuff. And I think Loki's just the, 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 the triple A title of all this shit. 100%. And I think the thing that you can say about Loki more than any of these shows and why it's the best is the dedication to character. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. the dedication to character. And I would feel like, yes, the story is, I feel like they are well focused on the story, but the character allows the story to kind of like mix in properly in a way. Like it just kind of mm-hmm. coalesces and it feels you like know what it else feels too, good. AC. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Another thing is you got Tom Hiddleston to do it. This is like, I feel like the quality of the shows go up. If it's Chris Evans, Captain America, that's a completely right. different quality show that no offense to my man but that completely Tupac. different quality uh, chris, Evan, chris evans would have gotten the bank loan what are you saying rod <laughs> that's what i'm saying he would have got <laughs> the <laughs> bank loan he would have had the chris ship bankrupt. <laughs> yep he would have got that boat fixed in episode one we wouldn't even be talking about that part you know like yeah like <laughs> part of this also is cachet you know it's like who who's yeah. gonna be the headline for a lot of these people? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think the ones where you got, you know, even Wine Division. I mean, if you don't like the finale, I get it. But up until that point, that shit was prestige television for a yeah. lot. It was appointment TV for people, and I, I I think there's something to like that name cachet. And that's what I was gonna. That's what I was gonna say because I I think Loki has the two best episodes out of all the Disney Plus shows. Uh, episode six, season one, and then this episode. Um, I think WandaVision, the thing that lets WandaVision down is the villain. At the, you know, like there's like that, the fight at the end with her and Agatha. I think that's what lets WandaVision down. But I'll tell you, man, like WandaVision, I was getting up at five in the morning to watch WandaVision. Yeah. I was getting up at I, five I, in the morning to watch WandaVision. There was a point, like I will say, like when we, when we were doing those shows, those first seven and even the eighth one too, because mm-hmm. it really goes through the Wanda mm-hmm. conclusion. There was just like there was a certain feeling going yeah. on, and and you could feel it in the conversation around because the it was the first one. So, no, so no, if Falcon and the Winter Soldier, if Falcon and the Winter Soldier was the first one, a song from it would not have been number one on iTunes. So, no, but so, I'm sorry, I, I just disagree with you, Mace. I think that WandaVision yeah. captured something really. I think I, I, I think too much the imagination of folks. Yeah, folks, I think, anyway, I, folks who don't, yeah. folks yeah. who don't mess with the MCU were into yeah. it. Yeah, and that's also I like. As yeah, bad as, as 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 y'all felt Falcon and the Winter Soldier was, they also had that episode with the Dora Miller J that is yes what is was that what like, we're talking like about. that shit yeah. hit everything like that's the <laughs> one where you're like if you could just make six episodes of this shit like <laughs> it wouldn't even be close. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, no, no I, mean, so I think I, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I was well, gonna I was say gonna, that. I was, okay, yeah. AC, go ahead. No, what I was gonna say was, <laughs> I know we we cut each other off a couple times there, but uh, I apologize about that. But let no, me just no say worries. this because Rod, I, like I think the thing with Falcon and the Winter Soldier that is always kind of funny to me is that, yo, episode five was good. Like episode, mm-hmm. like they do the the turn, they do the John Walker turn, and the episode five thing is good. But then they do the thing and make him and Bucky dap each other up at the end. It's yeah, like, yo, what wild. the hell? That just like. That made me so mad. I was quote so a great, mad. The quote a great scholar. Uh, it felt like Sam was playing checkers and not chess. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> right. Classic. That's right. Classic. That's right. Yeah. So I mean, so I, I yeah. mean, I'll say, I think, I think one division's the, I think one division's still the best show. Um, mm-hmm. I think Loki has the two best episodes out of all the Disney Plus series, though. And I think Loki, and I think Loki does have the Rod's point about like the cachet and who it is. Elizabeth Olsen is a fantastic actor yeah. just a fantastic mm-hmm, yeah. and she is she is wanda maximoff man and to the yeah. point about it being earned right like we've seen like the trauma she had we we saw that we saw her lose her brother we saw all, all of it made sense falcon being denied a bank loan that's redlining that's just you know the seven mm-hmm. you, you a black man you know and 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 and, and tupac we got it right like we, we we figured it out um but i think i think <laughs> wanda <laughs> <Vision> <laughs> Shout out to the Mackie man. Shout out to the shout out to Mackie man. But I think I think the when it's worked, Hawkeye was also really good TV man. And I like shows that know what they are. Hawkeye knew what it was. Hawkeye was a Christmas show about passing the baton, 
right? And Kingpin came and kicked his ass. And Daredevil was there, and it was it was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, but I think it's still one division. But Loki I, Hiddleston is the guy, man, and, and and I think his his performance carries that for sure. And lastly, Maze, you made a point about how we would have the fact that we're talking about a Casey. Uh, short is is evidence of how good the show is i'll tell you i think that's evidence that they shortchanged a lot of those characters and what they gave us made us want to see a little bit more but i think they shortchanged a lot of the characters in the second season it was very much loki majors a little bit of sylvie like for me renslayer gets pruned she ends up in the void i'm like am i supposed to care about a lion about to eat you am i supposed to care about that shit um so that that's that's my only that was the biggest thing to me that was the biggest thing to me that indicated that there could be a third season that's a, that's how, a good how, how, how do they address Renslayer doing anything other than in a Loki show? That's mm. fair, and especially because they did the um they did the little pan, even though it's like dark in the void. Like they did the pan to the words for all time, as if she gonna mm. build a TVA down there, something <laughs> like that. She gonna take all of herself. <laughs> that's how long she's gonna be down there. She can get with <laughs> that uh, she's, centuries. She can get, she can get with the hotel, uh, Kang, because uh, I saw a pyramid in the background. So, like, mm-hmm. who knows what kind of stuff they can come down there and put uh, together in there. They a lot of black it. liberation uh, talk, right? A lot of black liberation talk, right? Yeah, he's going he to show up be, uh, looking uh, like Dr. Umar. <laughs> open, open up a school for multiple children. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Hotep Kang. Wow. Hotep, that's Hotep, Hotep Kang. Hotep, Hotep, Hotep I, I want to see that. Okay, you know I convinced myself I do want to spin off. I guess recast Jonathan Majors, give us Hotep Kang, and that's I can just cast Dr. Umar. I mean yeah. <laughs> Pete Davidson going to brunch with Ravona. I need it. Need it. Need it. <laughs> Gods of Egypt starring. <laughs> Hey, he's trying to he's con- as white he's as the rest to- of the cast of that movie. <laughs> Kang is trying to convince, uh, trying to convince the new Black Panther to join him and shit. Like my queen, come on, you gonna let these dragons do this my to queen. us? I'm a high value man. No, Rod, this is perfect because he can say I'm a high value man. Come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> get Terrence Howard to come back and, as, as, as Hotel King. As Hotel King. <laughs> you just don't listen to these Jacobian devils. <laughs> Where are my brunch boots, man? My brunch boots. <laughs> <laughs> that meanwhile you find you you find you find Hotep Kang with with a Yukubia. Oh my god. <laughs> Absolutely. He's gonna recast Ravana as a white woman. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Anson. That's what you gonna do. <laughs> no, I, thought she, was, I thought she was playing the black girl. I I thought thought she was playing the black girl. A white girl disguised as a black girl disguised as a white girl, man. Come on. <laughs> We hold up thunder. White chicks in the MCU. Let's do it. Holla at us, uh, Kevin. Feige. The dude is playing a dude disguised as another dude. <laughs> Thank you, mates. And that's how it is. Let's, let's do it. Someone on our Discord a couple two weeks ago did suggest. I think it was Caleb suggested uh, R. E. J. as his character from Tropic Thunder to play Kang. <laughs> Like Kirk Lazarus is the character's name. I mean, yeah, Kirk Lazarus could do it. I mean, oh, he, if, he definitely could. He, I mean, he anyone could save the MCU. It'd be Kirk. It right. seems that the uh, it seems that the the R R D J return rumors are uh, possibly false, but it did make me think it, it would be dope if he returned, but as Riri's AI for her suit, yeah. like he was in the that comics. That, like that would be that'd like be, such a dope. swerve, but like also like dope, you know. But uh, obviously that check's time. still gonna be crazy though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I mean, you don't pay a man that much money to make him just like. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> he only gotta, never, he'll never do forget he had 15 minutes of screen yep. time in Spider-Man: Homecoming and made a cool 15 mil. Cool 15 so million. Movie. And, and Jake, so and Jake, good. you know he's gonna so show good. up to Redwood Studios, it's right? You know oh, he's gonna show absolutely. up. There. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, I, the thing about the RDJ rumors, like, I don't think, th- obviously, there's, there, there definitely is nothing done currently. Like, I don't, yeah. I can't say he won't come back, but I can tell you mm-hmm. that there's no ink has been on paper at all. And yeah. I think, frankly, 
if I'm his agent, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying, no, we're not doing this again. Mm. Like, for his, as someone who loves the MCU, I'd love for him to come back. As someone who loves movies, don't come back, man. You you, you, you won. You don't need to, you don't need to do mm. this again. Yeah. I think Evans is definitely coming back. Actually, I think Evans is probably well, they they signed him under the under the rug. You mean that ago. his other projects since he left the MCU haven't been that successful for him and mostly sucked? <laughs> you ain't see Ghosted? <laughs> oh, I, I did see Ghosted. <laughs> Ghosted Dawn, felt like baby. the first movie. Felt like the first Yo, movie that was her. written by Shout AI. <laughs> he got to got put his tights back on, bro. <laughs> it's time. Yeah, it's America's I, ass. Man. It's time. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right, guys. This was this was a lot of fun. What if he comes back, but he comes yeah. back as Johnny from uh, Fantastic Four? <laughs> oh, I would do it. I think there's a chance for that. I think there's a chance that we get dual 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 Johnny, double yeah, yeah. Yeah, double Chris. I would put a lot of money on that, honestly. And yep. yeah, I, I don't know if DraftKings has that listed, but I would put money on it. <laughs> uh, well, certainly will. In in the multiverse, you know, anything you is know. possible. Um I, I salute I salute this crew. This is our own little personal TVA that we've assembled for these last <laughs> two episodes. This has been a lot of fun. Loki's been a lot of fun. And uh now we now we move on. We have the Marvels currently in theaters and we will uh, have a show out there for you folks on Tuesday. And um we have Echo not too long in the distance. Uh, we get to the gritty the Marvel spotlight. The mm. the gritty streets. <laughs> Of of Marvel well, with the uh, are they called it Marvel Spotlight? What's that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they say oh, so they it is, yeah, it's... Pre- you don't need any previous knowledge of the MCU to watch that one, even though clearly in that trailer <laughs> there's Kingpin <laughs> from Daredevil. <laughs> and so Daredevil. I want to say they thread that needle. I was go- the joke I was going to make is M- uh, MCU Spotlight is they knew Kingpin and they let it happen to Echo. Oh my God. <laughs> the joke I was going to make was that I wonder how much they paid AC for the licensing of Spotlight for <laughs> AC oh. Spotlight podcast. Oh, Jesus that. Christ. That's what a, what a old callback. Oh my God. Deep cut for you. I, 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 had no gray, I had no gray hair back then. I'm oh sorry. My, my mind went to uh, the 2015 uh, film instead of your Spotlight. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. No harm, no foul, buddy. Oh my gosh. It's been a lot of fun, guys. So, yeah, uh, appreciate everybody for for hopping on. Let's get everybody's uh, work and follows and all the good good things. Maze, what's next on Cinephobe? All right, follow me at Corn Puzzle on Twitter and Instagram. Follow at Cinephobe on Instagram for all the kinds of fun pictures and screenshots and videos that I post there. Monday, we are dropping. The first CT5 of the award season. So we're doing the best ass off performances of 2023. Mm -hmm. That comes out Monday. It's been a busy year. It's been a lot of daisy chaining. It's been a lot of ass offs. And we go through our favorites. And then next week after that, we got Timeline. The Richard Donner movie starring the immaculate Paul Walker. May he rest in peace forever in heaven. There is a, I mean, I'm just going to spoil it. He delivers a slide tackle in this movie that is out of this world. It blew my mind. I watched it 47 times. Tune in for that episode. Oh my God! Wait a minute. Now that Paul Walker's in play, that means the the legendary Too Fast, Too Furious is in play. Oh my God! Yep, and Zach and Zach's eligible to pick it. Will he pick it? Oh, we will see. Oh, can't wait for Cinephobe. You know what I would say? Hey, Maze, tell me, tell me to pick Too Fast, Too Furious. Hey, Jake, will you pick Too Fast, Too Furious for me? I said, forget about it, (laughs) Cole. <laughs> Pockets ain't empty, cuz. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. We oh, hungry. We hungry. Oh, we hungry. Oh, oh, man. Tyrese is on one in that damn movie. Oh, my gosh. Dalvin Osorio, appreciate you for joining. Uh, besides uh, being frustrated at another another Jets season, uh, what, what, what else you got going on, sir? The Jets frustrated me when they went and got the Unsullied to play quarterback. Everything else is just downhill after that. Uh, you guys can follow Damn. me on Twitter at DA underscore Osario, Badlands, turn on the Jets. Uh, and yeah, go see the Marvels. First black woman to 
direct a Marvel movie, absolutely rooting for it. And uh, Black is beautiful, yeah. baby. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yes, yes. And our, our pal Rod, where can we find you, sir? You mean your MCU fatigue hasn't kicked in at the black people getting jobs yet? Okay, cool. We got to see it. <laughs> um, keep that energy going. Um, uh, you can find me, the black guy who tips is a... <laughs> <laughs> you can find me the Black Guy Who Tips podcast. It's a com- it's a comedy podcast I do with my wife, uh, five days a week basically. And um, you can find me on uh, Twitter, Rider Miss Prime, um, and just tweeting through it with the same stubbornness mm-hmm. as Loki doing mm-hmm. a million time loops to learn how to do time travel. One hundred percent. And Jake Christie. You can follow me on Twitter at the J Christie. Also follow me on TikTok at the J Christie. I only mentioned that because I oh, okay. spent five minutes making a TikTok today that is going to end up with like 10,000 views randomly. So shout out to TikTok. Um, also, you see behind me, Stephanie Williams' book. Buy that. I'm oh, explaining so it. Steph. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, strange and, un- and uh, unsung all stars of the DC multiverse. I wanted to display it like people do when they're not doing TV hits. I don't know if I did a good job, but. Mm. Yes, a salute to that book. Yeah, foreword by one James Gunn. So salute to Steph, making it big out here, doing big things. Appreciate her. And, of course, you can follow me on the Twitter at Anthony Canton underscore three. Follow the show on all platforms at MC University Pod. Subscribe to that YouTube channel. And, of course, patreon.com slash MC University Pod. You can get our bonus content, $3, to join the Discord. We're having a lot of fun talking about the Marvels on there. And, of course, $8 gives you an opportunity, Avengers level, to be on a subscriber mailbag with us. We have that coming. We have uh, Hobbs and Shaw this month. That, yep. that, should, be, uh, that should be a lot of fun. Uh, with to Jason, do. Statham. <laughs> yeah. Jason Statham. Jason Statham. His dick. Yes, yes. So appreciate everybody for supporting that. And, of course, like I said earlier, we, we, the Marvels are next. We'll get to that. We'll have a nice deep dive into that movie. And, yeah. Five star review, you know the whole nine yards. For Maze, for Dalbean, for Rod, for Jake. I'm Anthony Kans on the third. This has been Marvel Cinematic University. And we will talk to you next time for all time, always. I'm just